So let's talk a little bit about uh, clutch uh, lift, <clears throat> how much movement you'd see on the pressure plate. I commented earlier by email that I was not seeing the movement that I thought I would see. And, and this is what I would expect to see. So let's take a look and see what we have here. This is, uh, the keen observer will notice that this is a, uh, a CP clutch basket. A B-52 has holes in it, looks like that, but essentially they're alike, with a little exception in how the, uh, the friction plates are driven versus the plane plates, but they use exactly the same center, same plane plates. And, Paul, in your case, since you're using a CP gearbox uh, clutch basket, I used a CP gearbox clutch basket here. And I have the B-52 cover. There's an extra spring I put in here because I'm using really light uh, clutch springs, uh, really light springs, not uh, the standard clutch spring here, simply to make it easier for me so that when I operate the lever, I can do it with one or two fingers. So you can see the movement, the throw-out uh, mechanism is pushing on a ball like it normally would be. Then there's a push rod going up through the shaft, and all of this is driven by a clutch lever, and this one is 7 eighths of an inch from the fulcrum to the cable. So, what I'm seeing here is full lift, and it wouldn't alter if I had heavier springs in there. It would simply require more force on my part to operate the clutch. So let's measure a couple of things. All right, in this view here, I have removed the adjustable center from the pressure plate. Note there's a 5 16 inch diameter ball in that pressure plate, and that must be there so that the push rod can bear against the ball. And then I'm not certain you're able to see down in there well enough but the little shiny bit down in that recess is the push rod. The push rod now is uh, pushing on a dial indicator graduated in one thousandths of an inch. And when I press on the lever, I raise the throwout uh, mechanism, lifting the shaft and I'm able to get a full one hundred thousandths of an inch travel again using full stroke on a hand lever that has seven eighths inch from the fulcrum to the cable hundred thou so let's see what happens when we start putting a little bit of slack in a couple of places on the adjuster for the cable maybe an inline adjuster, maybe an adjuster down here, a little bit of slack at the adjuster here, and see how we rapidly lose a lot of travel on the lift of this pressure plate simply by having tolerances, or in this case little increments, stack up, and they don't stack up in your favor. So now we have the adjuster back in the pressure plate. The threads on this adjuster are 18 threads per inch. So Berman tells you to pull, uh, tighten it until you feel that you're up against the push rod and then back it off one half turn. One turn on a thread that's 18 threads per inch is 55 thousandths of an inch movement. So we turn this half a turn, that would be 27 and a half thousandths. So now I'll put my dial indicator back on top of this and let's see how we lift this clutch plate. Okay, <clears throat> dial indicator in place, we're bearing on the uh, the adjuster. When I operate the lever, before I was getting a hundred thousandths travel, now I'm getting a little over 60 thousandths. So I've given up almost half of the travel by having half a turn of slack in that adjuster. And let's suppose here at the lever where 
I'm beginning to get pressure right there. That's just a little bit. So let's put in, we'll loosen this half a turn, full turn. So now I have a little bit more play. How does that stack up over here? Now I've lost about five thousandths of an inch travel. If I have an inline adjuster, like I have here, and I screw that in a little bit, so now I have a little play in the cable. How does that impact my lift? <clears throat> now, <coughs> excuse me. Now I'm down to half of what I had before, simply because I have just a little bit of play in a couple of different places. So let's talk about the math involved. So, as you recall, we have a little play at the lever, a little play at the inline adjuster. We are half a turn on this adjustment nut, as Berman tells us to do. And with a 7 8 inch lever, I'm still getting about 50 thousandths. But when I took all the slack out, I'm getting 100 thousandths. So we're not getting as much lift as we had before. That means the individual plate to plate clearance has now diminished. So we have five plane plates and four friction plates, if I remember correctly. So between the bottom plane plate, which is normally thick, and the first friction, let's assume you wanted to have four or five thousandths of an inch. And then you have another, and on top of that friction, you'd like to have three, four, five thousandths of an inch clearance when this lifts. Since you have nine individual zones for clearance between frictions and plane plates, nine times five, a little bit of clearance for each plate to slide by or slip by the other without dragging, nine times 45, or nine times five is 45, you've only got 50. So if there's a little bit of wobble, a little bit of run out, the clutch will drag and it manifests that in making it difficult to engage gears. So my proposal is get away from Berman's recommendation of half a turn. Bring the adjuster down to you can just feel it beginning to touch and give it a quarter of a turn. And this is critical. I should have mentioned this before. We started with maximum slack in the cables so that when you go to adjust this adjuster against that push rod, turn it to the point where you can see that you're beginning to raise the pressure plate and then back it off your quarter turn. And then take all your slack out So that at the lever, you have a little bit. So we're talking about measured on the outside, not at the inside, not at the end of the ball, but between the, uh, the perch and the lever itself. You might want to have an imperial system an eighth of an inch. Metric, uh, two, three millimeters is going to be adequate. And then when you go to operate this clutch. You're looking for maximum lift. And by setting that at a quarter of a turn instead of half a turn slack and taking out the slack elsewhere, we've now increased our lift by 50%. It was 50 thousandths, it's now 75 thousandths and you can see a lot more daylight in this clutch and I think that that'll solve 99% of the problems you're having. The remaining 5% is inherent in the fact that the clutch baskets have a little bit of wobble in them, the plates are not perfectly flat, 
it's inherent in the design, I think you'll see a big improvement. Good luck.